Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I am testing out a new spot welder. Now this one was sent to me by an AliExpress vendor, but as you guys know, no one can buy me, so if this is a good spot welder, I will tell you, and if it is junk, I will tell you it is junk. All right, now let's open it up and get to testing. Boxes from China are always so well wrapped, I don't know how to start opening them. All right, let's see what we got here. Power cord. Some sort of display screen. Power supply. Some important wire and knob, I guess. And here's the main show. This is the capacitor-based spot welder. Right, let's see if we can defoam this. All right, now there are no instructions, but I usually skip those anyways, so let's just figure this out. The screen looks like it should go approximately here. All right, so far so good. All right, this knob seems like it would go on here. Well, should we plug this thing in and hope we don't make a fire? It looks like we're upside down. So I've got Pulse 1, Pulse 2, system settings, a little hard to read. Interval, auto, and voltage setting. 29 milliseconds is kind of a long pulse. Maybe let's start at like 10. Now I assume this is meant to be auto-activated, otherwise I would probably use this to activate a foot pedal or, or something, but this didn't include a foot pedal, so let's go to the auto setting. I assume this is how many seconds after it's touching, will it actually weld? Let's start this at like one. In the settings, I have, ooh, a buzzer switch. Let's turn that off, because that's annoying. Oh, that's so much better. All right, auto, set, single capacitor voltage. That all looks good. All right. Well, shall we try and do some, some test welds here? All right, so I got these QB cells here. These are the ones that I stock on Verzen. So let's just pull a few of these cells out and play around with them. Let's keep our nickel out of the way and let's see what happens. Actually that was a tease. Let's first weld on some uh, nickel strip here. Just weld it to itself and see how this goes before I blow up a battery cell. All right, let's see what happens. Theoretically this should weld after one second. Nice, it did it. There's a nice smoky burning smell. I don't know if that's a good sign or not. All right, so I was able to pull those apart by hand. Probably not the strongest weld then, so let's try upping our pulse here a bit. All right, I'm at 15. Ooh, that was definitely more powerful. You can also tell the difference in little singe mark on my table here. Speaking of, let's use my cutting board here for the rest of these. All right, so that felt a bit stronger. We've also, looks like, yeah, we've torn through the nickel strip there when we pull it apart, which is good. The two metals are actually bound to each other. Let's try this now on a cell, let's see what happens. Let's go on the negative end of the cell, less danger there. And one spot weld coming up. All right, it looks good, nice and clean. See if I can pull that off with just my hands. All right, so I was able to get it off, but we definitely tore nickel out of the strip. This is 0.15 millimeter nickel strip. So that's exactly what you want to see with a nice weld. Getting that nickel strip just ripped right off so it's really part of the stainless steel can of the cell there. So that's a good sign. Let's, uh, let's try welding a few cells here together, see what happens. And now before I put these cells together, I'm just gonna take my ring off because whenever you're actually building a battery and you're working with more power than one cell, you definitely don't wanna be shorting on your hand. You can also wear gloves, which is a good idea. In this case, I'm gonna be putting all these cells in parallel, so it's not super critical that I wear gloves, but when you start putting cells in series and you have some with the opposite terminal together like this, even a wedding ring is small enough that you could just short those uh, cell terminals there. So you want to be very careful when you're putting multiple cells together. All right, so let's try making a uh, 1S3P pack here. A 
One thing I like is that the probes are not sticking at all to the nickel. All right. I mean, that looks really nice, right guys? Let's do the backside here. Okay, I just saw the cell vent a bit. I'm gonna get my trash can here. All right, that cell is not warm, but you guys hear that sizzle there? All right, let me zoom out here real quick. So I keep a metal trash can around for these kind of situations where if a cell ever starts venting or a battery I'm working on catches on fire, I can basically try and dump it in this trash can and it'll buy me a few seconds to run it outside and throw it outside to reduce the risk of a house fire. But yeah, if you look here, I see what looks like a little bit of bubbling there on the end of the cell. Yeah, you see that? All right, so that is a bad <laughs> sign. Now the cell is still cool to the touch, which is a good sign that it's not starting to heat up. But that is, uh, to put it simply, very, very bad. You never want to rupture one of these cells because it is a significant fire hazard. Now I'm just checking to see that it's not heating up yet and it's still not heating up, but this cell is at this point incredibly dangerous and I'm going to be getting it out of here very quickly. All right, so what happened here? I have this set on 15 milliseconds of pulse, which is not that long. It's longer than I usually put on most of my spot welders. So there's a chance that this was just too uh, powerful and I burned through the negative end of this cell. So potentially that's on me. I mean, the spot welder was working great before this. I still see some slight venting. I saw some slight bubbling there on the end. All of these cells feel like the same temperature. And in fact, let me grab my uh, thermal camera and take a look at this. All right, so I got my thermal camera out here, and the good news is I don't see any heat coming from these cells. They're all staying at room temperature here. So that's a good sign. It looks like this cell, even though it vented a bit, didn't uh, start reacting and it's not headed for thermal runaway. So that's a very nice thing to see. That being said, you never want to have a cell vent any liquid. When that electrolyte starts mixing, bad things can happen. So. Good news is nothing seems to be happening in this case, but you always want to be extra careful with these cells anytime you're combining them together or doing even a, an operation on a single cell. Now, just to be safe, I'm going to disconnect these cells here so they're not together and I'm gonna get rid of that cell in the middle because it is a problem now. Good news is we've got a very good, strong spot weld here. All right, so we've got these cells out of the picture. Now let's try turning this down and doing some more cells. I normally stick to 10 or below. Let's try something like 8. I might have just gone too high there. So let's pull out some more cells here and try and be careful. Try this again. All right, no venting sounds. That's good. It all sounds good. Let's try pulling that off and seeing how that goes. Looks like we've got some nice welds there again. We're getting that uh, nickel strip artifact on there. Not quite as strong as before, but we also didn't burn through the cell this time, so that's good. Let's try doing another little pack here with the lower setting. And I'm gonna start with three fresh cells this time. Let's try this again. All right, everything looks good there. Let's turn this over and go to the other side now. So that actually worked very nicely. I mean, the welds look beautiful, nice and clean. Everything is nice and strong, and I'm very happy with that. So I think if you're gonna use this spot welder, be careful about going too high on your millisecond pulse length. I probably just 
ran too much current for too long through those cells and I burned through that one cell on the negative side. So make sure you keep it low. I probably increased it much more quickly than I should have. If you remember on these original test pieces, I was looking to get that nice strong weld where I was really ripping the nickel apart, but I probably got a little overzealous in this test. You don't really need it to be that crazy strong. So uh, I think from what I'm seeing here with this lower pulse that I'm pretty happy with this welder. Now, so one of the advantages here is that you don't need to have a LiPo battery like some of the other spot welders I've tested. Here I've just got this AC brick and that's enough to power this thing because all you're doing is charging up the capacitors here. So if you don't want to have a highly reactive LiPo brick laying around while you're spot welding, this is a good way to do it. I also really like the screen, it's got a lot of adjustability, and I'm glad I could turn off that awful beeping in the beginning. Now there is one thing I don't like about this, is how big these collets are compared to these small probes here. I found that while I'm trying to make my welds, I have to be very careful not to touch the metal part of the collets here together so that I don't accidentally do the spot weld through the end of the probes here instead of through the actual tip. See, like if I just touch the collets together, it starts the countdown here on the auto thing. So you don't want that, of course. I might be able to open these up and get a little more probe out. Let's see how much probe they actually put in here because that would improve that situation if I can get the probes a little further away. Oh wow, they actually give you this nice long probe. Why were they choked up so high? Look at that. Man, give me some more probe out here. What are you being so stingy for? Now that's a man's probe right there. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now I got a lot more freedom to get these probes in there and not have the collets touching. All right, so definitely pull out a little more probe material there if you're gonna use this spot welder. All right, so how much was this thing? 540 shekels, let's convert that to dollars for you guys. It's something around like 150 bucks or so. All right, $162. So it's definitely more expensive than some of the cheap options out there, but it's actually a pretty nice spot welder. It gives you a lot of adjustability here. There's probably a lot of features I haven't even gotten into. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this spot welder. 160 bucks will get you something like the uh, Sunco spot welders, and this is loads better. It is much more precise. I don't have to worry about the transformer and the thing exploding on me. And it's kind of cool that it's capacitor based. I mean, that's just kind of neat. So uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this guy. I just wish that uh, there was some sort of nice, easy to use uh, trigger assembly. And I'm sure that if I wanted to, I could connect in a foot pedal if I have one. But if they included one, that would be a lot nicer. All in all though, I think I'm gonna give this thing a thumbs up. It's a nice unit and I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found that review and testing video interesting. All in all, I'd say a nice little spot welder unit here. Last but not least, it is time to announce the randomly selected commenter from my last video to win the giveaway. And the winner is... Lasersby. Anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books in the future, all you have to do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you want, and hopefully you will be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And for those that don't want to wait that long, you can find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.